Welcome to Sunday School for ages 9 to 11 for October 25th, 2020. I do not own the rights to this music. The Bible basis is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, Loving for Real. Hey, Jimmy declared in a loud voice, pulling his shoulder away. Don't put your hands on me. Mrs. Garcia quickly went to the end of the line to see what the trouble was. Jimmy pointed to the student behind him and said, I told her not to put her hands on me. No one does that. I am sure she meant no harm, Jimmy, Mrs. Garcia responded. Well, she's lucky because no one gets away with touching me, he declared. I want you to keep that thought in mind as we see the exhibits, Mrs. Garcia said. The exhibit the class came to see that day was about the civil rights struggle. Some of the pictures showed Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. leading a large group through a neighborhood of very angry people. Some of those angry people threw bricks and bottles at the marchers and many of them, including Dr. King, were injured but they did not return the violence. See, Jimmy, Mrs. Garcia said, after they viewed the exhibit, Dr. King and the others didn't fight, not with their fists anyway. Instead of returning the violence, he taught people to be strong and patient, enough to love those angry neighbors, even when they were acting wrong. By not using their fists, they did not show weakness, but rather a great deal of strength and love. God wants us to have self-control. That means to have control over what you say, how you respond, and what you do. What do you think? Does it require more strength to respond with love or with fists? In a similar circumstance, how strong would you be? Earlier in his letter to the Corinthians, the Apostle Paul talked about several spiritual gifts that had been given to the church by the Holy Spirit. He now stated that no matter how important or impressive those gifts appear to be if the people did not also have one other important gift then all the others were of little or no importance that one important addition was the gift of love when Paul said love he used the Greek word agape which refers to a divine unconditional love Another word for this kind of love is charity. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the King James Version. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy, and understand all mysteries and all knowledge. And though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity aimeth not, charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things endureth all things charity never faileth 
but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know, even as also I am known. And now about it, faith, hope, charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity. Now let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13 one more time. And I'm going to read the NIV version. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Let's look up the definition of kind. Because love is kind. Kind is another way of saying considerate. Caring about and being respectful of one another. It also means to be polite. Love rejoices with the truth. That means love gets happy when the truth comes forth. Love always protects. That means it keeps safe from harm or injury. Are you full of love? Love always trusts. That means it always has a firm belief or confidence in that things will turn out right. Love always hopes. That's an expectation of good happening, a desire for good to happen. Love always perseveres. That means it keeps going on and on and on. Love never fails. That means love never loses. 
The Bible says, By this shall all men know that you are my disciples. If you have love one to another. There is one scripture or two scriptures I want you to find on your own. What are the two most important commandments? And God bless you and thank you for joining me today.